Laura, I'm not sure um, if you'll be able to hear this, but I actually have a clip on the border wall since we're uh, still on that um, of Luis Gutierrez. Have you heard this before? Uh, no, I don't think I can hear it anyway. Yeah, I don't think play on. I don't think you're going to be able to hear it, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and play it for the audience because, I mean, it is just uh, it, it's it's about the border wall. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and play that. This is Luis Gutierrez yesterday, representative uh, on the border wall and the situation that's unfolding there. 45 seconds, I won't take them all. But it is repugnant to me and astonishing to me that during Christmas, I like to call them the holiday seasons to be ex inclusive, but during Christmas, because the majority always wants to just call it Christmas, that during Christmas, a time in which we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, a Jesus Christ who had to flee for his life with Mary and Joseph. Thank God there wasn't a wall that stopped him from seeking refuge in Egypt. Thank God that wall wasn't there. And thank God there wasn't an administration like this or he would have too have perished on the 28th, on the day of innocence when Herod ordered the murder of every child under two years of age. Maybe I haven't gone a lot to Bible school, but I know that part. Thank God. Shame on everybody that separates children and allows them to stay at the other side of the border, fearing death, fearing hunger, fearing sickness. Shame on us for wearing our badge of Christianity during Christmas and allow the secretary to come here and lie. Thank you. Time of the gentleman has expired. The secretary would care to respond to any of that. Only then to say that calling me a liar are fighting words. I'm not a liar. We've never had a policy for family separation. I'm happy to walk the gentleman through it again. A policy of family separation would mean that any family that I encountered in the interior, I would separate. It would mean that any family that I found at a port of entry, I would separate. It would mean that every single family that I found illegally crossing, we would separate. We did none of those. What we did do is uphold the laws that Congress has passed, and we prosecuted those who choose to come here illegally. As far as not being compassionate, let me just tell you what I have done. And of course, he couldn't be bothered to stay, so I'm happy to tell the rest of the committee. So Luis Gutierrez throwing a temper tantrum like a child and storming off, which, by the way, he has a record of doing. If you will recall, he's the representative that stormed out of the last State of the Union when Trump was giving his speech. He just got angry and stormed out. So guy clearly unhinged, clearly does not have a good handle on his emotions, can't handle things like a rational adult, and he has to throw a temper tantrum just like a child every single time. So let's break down some of the things that he said there, because I think Luis Gutierrez himself actually hit the nail on the head when he says, I've not gone to a lot of Bible school. So him equating the situation, <laughs> I know, him equating Mary and Joseph fleeing Palestine and, and fleeing uh, that area in Judea and Bethlehem to try to flee the persecution of Herod is not the same thing as illegal immigration for a number of reasons. So can, can we talk about why they were in Bethlehem, Bethlehem anyway? Yeah, because of Rome and the taxes. <laughs> They were there to register. Right. Their child. They were they were legally following immigration. Come on. Right. They were actually complying with the law, which is the whole reason they were in Bethlehem in the first place. Yeah. And yeah, so let's go with their theory. There's a couple other things that he got completely wrong on that. First of all, to my knowledge, there is not a policy in Mexico or South America where they're killing all the children under two years old. Now, maybe somewhere I missed that, but I really don't think that Guatemala is just saying everyone under two, nix them. Pretty sure that is not occurring. And if it were, let's just pretend that it was. If it were happening, then a family would be able to come to the border, come to a legal port of entry, say, we are in fear for our son's life, and we seek asylum. And America, if that were taking place, would grant them asylum if they had that problem. Not like what we found on the border with the caravan, where about 90 to 95 percent of the caravan goers were young men specifically saying that we found in that video from Army Hammer, uh, Amy Horowitz and, and Prager U, saying that, no, we're, we're coming for the jobs. Well, you can come for a job if you want to, but you're going to get turned away for asylum status. That's not what asylum is. Asylum is not I want a better job. Asylum is I'm in fear for my life. 
if you read the actual statute, I mean, right. it even lays out what this what asylum means. It's persecution. It's mm-hmm. Exactly what it says. And if this were happening, what what Christ was going through in Judea, if this were happening in South America, you better believe that America would be letting those people in on asylum status. Those would be legitimate asylum seekers. The people that are trying to storm across the border and slip across this way, those are not asylum seekers. And here's an a, who does this? I, I mean, they're I not know. even coming to be okay with America. I mean, gosh, they're, they're like carrying their own country's flag. <laughs> yeah, and, you know? and and here's another thing that is completely lost on Mr. Gutierrez on this. Uh, the order from Herod did not happen on December 28th, because first of all, we don't even know when Jesus was actually born. I mean, the Catholic Church a long time ago said... December 25th is when we're celebrating it, but even then they didn't say that was Jesus' birthday. They said this is just the time that we're going to celebrate it. And Nor so, did it happen on his birthday that he issued the order. I right. Mean, this was a little bit of time after. Well, he said December 28th. Guess where Jesus was during December 28th? He was In still— the womb? He was No, he was—well, I mean, again, not December 28th, but three days after the day of his birth. He was yeah. still in Judea. How do I know Mm -hmm. this? Because it says he was circumcised on the eighth day afterward, according to the custom. And then after that happened, after the time of purification, after his birth, they went down to Jerusalem to present him at the temple and present a sacrifice. Jesus was still in Israel at this time. And so this idea, he gets the timeline wrong on top of that. Three days after his presumable birth, obviously not actually in December, but three days after the birth of Jesus you would not have had him already fleeing to Egypt because he would have been there. So Gutierrez gets that wrong. He gets the timeline wrong. He gets the intent of Mary and Joseph trying to follow the law wrong. And here's another thing that he gets completely wrong in all of this. It was probably weeks before the Magi actually came and visited Christ. Because you'll notice that the shepherds visit him in a manger. The Magi, according to the biblical narrative, visit him in a house which means there has been some time past, possibly like six weeks. We just don't know. I don't think that it was quite that long, but it could have been weeks on end that they came that to visit him. That is probably something like a couple of months. Yeah, it, that is actually possible because we don't give a clear timeline. And so mm-hmm. th- he gets the timeline completely backwards on this. And here's another thing that he completely ignores. Jerusalem and Israel both had border walls, both of them. The city of Jerusalem yeah, and, and still do. <laughs> And the nation of Israel also had border walls. And by the way, when the border walls of Jerusalem were taken down, God commanded them to be built back up. So this idea that there's something immoral about a wall, Luis Gutierrez, you can tell that he he characterized it exactly perfectly. I haven't been to a lot of Bible school. Yeah, that comes across pretty clearly, Luis Gutierrez. Probably had like zero Bible school. That's what I'm guessing. Zero. And by the way, this this is another great point. Heaven and Zion, described in the scripture, both have walls. Can we talk about what happened to, like, Jericho when their walls got knocked down? Yeah, not, g- not good for the Jerichoans. Walls was, that, you know, knocked down by God, but all the same, he did it so he could, like, you know, conquer them. So... <laughs> right, not not a great... You know, if if we want to not have walls, cities that don't have walls traditionally do not do well in the Bible, and Jericho is a sterling example of that. No, no. Heaven. You're right. Heaven has a wall. I mean, you, you kind of have to get, you know, through Christ before you can get up there. Right. In fact, yeah. the pasture that he talks about being the good shepherd, he talks about there being a wall and anybody that tries to come in other than the way of the gate, those people are interlopers and they will be cast out. <laughs> yep. So this idea that somehow there is something evil about a wall, I'm sorry, the Bible trounces that idea over and over and over and over again. So well, let's can, not pretend they have anything religious about them. No. I mean, they are pulling this card to try to get Christians on their side. The problem is that Christians know better. And here's the, here's the really ironic thing, Laura, and I know that you'll appreciate this. If I were a Democrat, especially if I were an ardent pro-choice Democrat like Luis Gutierrez is, is I don't think I would be bringing up Bible characters that God rebuked for slaying children. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like, the last people I would want to bring up if I were somebody that were pro-choice, would be Pharaoh and King Herod, because God was not real happy with them when they decided to take out a policy of killing children. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
I'd be backing away from that and running if possible. If I were a Democrat, those are the <laughs> two Bible characters I would never mention. <laughs> I just I would just leave the whole Bible alone if I were a Democrat because if you if you go and try to cite the Bible to support your position, I mean that's just gonna be thrown right back at you. Yeah, speaking of that, Lauren, and, and I know that this is a little off topic, but I just I, I don't remember if I actually got to talk to you about this one. Do you remember what was happening when we were having this debate earlier and for some reason the left suddenly discovered the Bible? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. When all of a sudden Jesus was an immigrant. And, yeah, Jesus was an immigrant. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and Jesus is a socialist, too. Well, they, that, that's that been going on for a long time. They've been claiming that mm -hmm. for decades. But I remember one specific, uh, specifically where um, uh, Ali Vashti was actually reading the Bible on MSNBC. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, wow. Um, it's another a, Festivus miracle. It's another Festivus miracle. The, the left has finally discovered the Bible. I mean, the fact that the left was actually reading Bible verses on national TV, on MSNBC of all places, that really was nothing short of miraculous. Yeah, it wasn't even the message. That's what kills me. Like, <laughs> easily, you, you hear it being the message, or, or worse, the non-inspired version. Well, now, one thing that was really funny about that is when they were reading these verses about immigration and bringing people in and, and strangers in another land and treating them as one of your own, they did kind of ignore the verses before that where it says to do that, they have to comply to the law of Moses. Well, you know, Caleb, <laughs> you can't have it both ways. You well, can't have it where they read the Bible and read the whole thing. Well, that's true, but I will say this, and and this was part of of when that went along with the uh, uh, with the biblical narrative because you had to comply with all of the laws of Moses, including any men in your company had to undergo circumcision. Now, any man is willing to do that to be a citizen of a different country. That man deserves citizenship, and he deserves to be treated like one of them. Absolutely, I mean, you work for it. Absolutely. I wonder, <laughs> not I, that I'm you know. saying we should implement that as a policy, but I just, I wonder how many takers we would have on the Southern border if we did. Um, anyway. And less crime. I mean, what? I didn't say that. Mm, probably. Yeah. But anyway, so that was a big thing. And, and we do really hope that the Senate actually passes that measure. Um, I, I really do. I would love to see a border wall. That would be a great Christmas present that the president could give to the American people. Hey, if you want all the latest updates to this channel, you need to go ahead and like this video and subscribe using that little notification bell down there. Now that gets you all the latest updates, political commentary, and any of my Bible classes or studies that I post to this channel. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe that it's because you hate America and hate Jesus, but I can't think of any other reason why you wouldn't subscribe.